Okay, this is uh, the last of the lessons of this uh, motion section, lesson 22. So, of course, you've got a test coming up. Um, all right, power, the uh, <coughs> definition, physics definition, the rate at which work is done on or by is called power. So, <coughs> rate. Whenever we're talking about rate in physics, there's time involved, and I said that was the work done. So that means that the power, and this is the bit missing in your notes here, is work over time, and of course work is change in energy, so it's change in energy with time. And the unit is watts capital W. Alright, example. Fastest woman to scale Rialto stairs in the great Rialto stair trek in a particular year climbed 100,222 steps which are a total of 247 metres high in, 40, in 7 minutes 58 seconds. Her mass is 60 kilos. At what rate was she using energy to overcome gravitational force alone? So at what rate was she using energy? So rate we using energy, we're not talking about work, we're talking about power. So what do we need? Well, we need some energy because power is changing energy over time. And what was the energy change? Well, if she's running up <coughs> the Rialto, it's gravitational, MGH. All right, her, so her mass is 60, 9.8 is gravity, and the height, they do tell you that how many steps, but yeah, that's irrelevant in terms of the question. 247 is the height. So when you multiply that out, you get one, four, five, two, three, six joule of energy being done. Now the time, in physics time has got to be in seconds. So the time then is seven times 60, seven minutes plus the 58. And when you do that, you get 478 seconds. And now power is changing energy over time. And the change in energy was 145236. And the time is 478 seconds. So the power is 303.8 watts when you do all of that on your calculator. Now in the real world, of course, we do work on stuff, but we don't always necessarily get energy transformed to form to what we want. And so that then brings up something called efficiency. All right, so for example, if we've got some electrical energy and it goes into a light, well, we want light energy out, which we do get, but we also get some heat. So when we talk about efficiency, we're not talking about all the energy change, but the one that we want. So we want light. So when we're talking about the efficiency there, it's the transfer of electrical um, into light. All right, so the percentage, from your notes, the percentage that's transformed <coughs> Um, is the efficiency. Okay, so how do we work it out? Well, there is a formula, and so efficiency. And it's a funny looking 
end thing with a long tail. I haven't quite done that right. Let's see if we can get it right this time. That's not quite right either. That's a bit better. So efficiency is useful. Energy out. Over energy in. Times 100. And so it's in percent. Example of efficiency is a typical one. Electric kettle uses 23.3 kilojoule of electrical energy as it boils water. The efficiency is 18%. How much of this energy actually transferred to the water as heat? Alright, so the electric kettle <coughs> will um, have a whole bunch of different things it's not just going to heat the water, it's going to heat the kettle itself and some will get to out to the, uh, the kitchen or whatever. So our efficiency equals energy out over energy in times 100. And we're told the efficiency is 18. The energy out is what we're interested in. So the energy out is the energy to boil the water. All right, that's what we're interested in. The energy in, we put 23.3 kilojoules, so that's times 10 to the 3 times 100. All right, <clears throat> so if we uh, times both sides by 23.3 by 10 to the 3 and divide both sides by 100 we'll get the energy out and so the useful energy out <coughs> will be 4194 joule which is 4.194 kilojoule All right. All right, okay, we're up to the last thing. And this is in everyday life, so power, force, and average speed. So in every day, every day, we have situations where we have friction. And we've got to overcome the friction. So when we get in our cars, for example, and we drive our car, we've got friction, so the car's got to keep providing a force. In this case, we can work out the power in a different, slightly different way. So power is work over time, of course, and work is force times distance, effects. So what we can do is we can put that in there, and then, and this is in your notes, the next, some lines missing, so we've got F, X over time. Now, what we look at is this X over time bit, and what we know is that average velocity, average velocity, is the distance over the time. So what I can do then is I can take average velocity and whack it in there instead of, and then you get that the power is the force times the velocity. Okay, so when something's moving with a certain velocity or speed and we know the force of friction, say, that's overcoming, we can work out the power that's got to produce by the motor. And this example just shows exactly that. The power required to keep a car moving at an average speed of 22 metres per second if friction is 1,200. So the power FV, 1,200 times 22. And you do that, you get 26400. 
which we would put as 26, not 2.6, 26.4 kilowatts. All right, that's it. As I said, very short one on this last one. Text questions, fifth test at that point. Um, there is a couple of videos there on the website for you to have a look at. It talks about work and power. Um, if there's anything in there that you haven't understood, make sure you ask.